the Shape Builder tool introduced in Inkscape 1.3 makes it super easy to create logos using grids. And we'll demonstrate by creating this logo. To start, I'm going to show the page grid by going up to the View menu and checking Page Grid here. If I zoom in a lot, I'll start to see the major grid lines, which are a bit more opaque than the minor ones. I don't actually need the minor grid lines, so I'll make them invisible by going to File, Document Properties, choosing the Grids tab, clicking the minor grid line color box here, and setting the alpha channel to zero. I'll also raise up the alpha channel for the major grid lines so I can see them better. Next I'll go up here and turn on Snapping. Then I'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool, and I'll snap to one of the grid intersections here. Then I'll click and drag while holding down Control to create a circle, and I'll make it an 8x8 circle. I'm going to turn off the circle's fill color by clicking the red X down here, and I'll give it a black stroke by holding down the Shift key and clicking the black color swatch. To change the stroke width, I'll right click the stroke width box here, and 0.1 should be good. Now I'll go to the Select tool, and I'm going to toggle off this button up here, which will prevent an object's stroke width from being scaled along with the rest of the object. Now I'll duplicate the circle by right clicking it and choosing Duplicate. Then while holding down Shift and Control, I'll scale down the duplicate to make it a 6x6 circle. The snapping should say Quadrant Point to Grid Line. Then I'll duplicate this one and make it 4x4. Then one more time for a 2x2 circle. Next I'll go to the Pin tool, and I'll snap to where the quadrant point of the biggest circle here meets the grid. Then I'll click one block below the bottom of the circle, and right click to finish the path. And I'll make the stroke width 0.1 to match the circles. Now I'll go to the Select tool and duplicate the path, then bring it one block to the left. And I'll repeat that two more times. Next I'll go back to the Pin tool, and click the bottom endpoint of the rightmost path here, then click one block to the left of the leftmost path, right click, and set the stroke width to 0.1. Now I'll go to the select tool, duplicate the path, and bring it up one block. And I'll repeat that three more times. Okay, I don't need snapping anymore, so I'll turn it off. I also don't need the grid anymore, so I'll go to the View menu and uncheck Page Grid. Alright, so to use the Shape Builder tool on these objects, I first need to select them all. Then I can activate the Shape Builder tool by clicking this icon here. Now if I zoom in, I can see some slight warping where the circles meet the straight paths. The Shape Builder tool apparently doesn't like circles, but fortunately it's an easy fix. First I need to go to the Select tool and select just the circles. And I need to turn them into paths by going up to the path menu and choosing object to path. Now I need to go to the node tool, select all of the nodes of all the circles, and click this button up here to turn them into symmetric nodes. Okay, now if I go back to the select tool and select everything again, then activate the shape builder tool and zoom in, I don't see any more warping. Alright, so with the shape builder tool, there are two modes that I can use, Add Mode and Delete Mode. With the Add Mode active, one thing I can do is click individual segments, which turns them blue. However, this also keeps the segments separate, as I can see by the lines between them. For this logo, I want to combine these segments together. To do this, I can click and hold inside one of the segments, then drag into the other segments. This makes the lines between them disappear. Now I can click and drag from this segment up to the other ones here. And if I need to undo the previous action, I can press Ctrl Z. And I'll get this small segment down here as well. Next I'll do the same for these segments. And I want to keep this part separate from this one, so I'll be careful not to click and drag between them. And finally I'll do this part. Now if I keep any segments gray, when I apply all of this, it will actually automatically delete those segments. However, if I want to go ahead and remove these segments now, so I can get a better idea of how everything will look, I can use Delete Mode. I can either activate Delete Mode using this button, or with Add Mode still active, 
I can hold down shift to temporarily switch to delete mode, then I can click and drag over the segments that I want to delete. Okay now to apply everything, I can either click the check mark button up here, or I can press the enter key. And here's the result. I'm going to rotate everything a bit, and I'll turn off the stroke color and give them all the same fill color for the moment. Now I can select the individual parts and give them different colors. Finally, to add some spacing between the parts, I'll select the outside part, go to Path, Path Effects to open the Path Effects dialog. Then I'll start searching for Offset here, choose the Offset Path Effect, and I'll click the minus button for the offset setting here one time. Then I'll do the same for the other parts. And to finalize the Path Effects, I'll select all of the paths, and go to Path, Object to Path. Okay, and that's how we can use the Shape Builder tool to create logos with grids. Thanks for watching.